This is part 54 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to load HTML data from the server from an ASPX page using jQuery load function. This is continuation to part 53, so please watch part 53 before proceeding. Here is what we want to achieve. This is same as what we did in the previous video session. In the previous video session, we loaded the help text from an HTML file. In this video, we will be loading the help text from an ASPX page, but we are actually going to store the help text data in a database table. So this is how it's going to work. The SQL Server database is going to have a table which will contain our help text data. And this ASPX page will load the data from the SQL Server database using ADO.NET and C Sharp. And then this HTML page is going to call this ASPX page and load the help text using jQuery Ajax load function. So let's look at this in action. The first step here is to create the required database table to store the help text data. So let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. Here we have the create table script. So we are creating this table dbl help text with these two columns help text key and help text. And here we have the insert script. I've already executed the script. And look at this. We have the help text key and help text columns. The help text key contains the key. That is, if the help text is for first name, the key is first name. If it's for last name, the key is last name. And within this column, we, we have the help text associated with that field. And I have also created stored procedure. So the name of the stored procedure is SP get help text by key. So if we give the stored procedure a key name, this stored procedure is going to return us the help text that is associated with that key. And if you look at the implementation of the stored procedure, this is straightforward. Select help text from TBL help text, where help text key equals whatever parameter we are passing to this procedure. So if we pass first name as the key, and when we execute the stored procedure, notice that we get the help text associated with that key, your first name as it appears in Passport. All right, so that's the first step. The next step is to add a connection string to the web.config file in our .NET project. So let's go to the web.config file, and under configuration section, I'm going to add a section for connection strings. And we want a connection string that points to our database, sample DB. So let's copy this and paste it right here. So here the name of the connection string is DBCS. And this is pointing to a server that's local to this machine. And the database name is sample DB. We are using Windows authentication. And now let's add a web form to this project. So we want to add a web form, and the name of this web form is going to be gethelptext.aspx. Now, you know, we are actually going to get the help text data from the database table. So in the previous video session, we actually stored the help text in this help.html file. Now, since we are loading the help text from the database table, we don't need this help.html file anymore. So I'm going to delete this help.html file. All right, and within this get help text.aspx page, we don't require any of this HTML. So I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to include a div element here. Let's give it an ID. Let's call this div result. And I'm also going to set this run at equals server. So basically, I'm turning this div element into a server side control. So since we have provided this run at equal server attribute, we should be able to access this control within the code behind file. All right, so here we are going to write some ADO.NET code to retrieve the help text data from SQL Server database table. So the first thing that we need to do is import some ADO.NET namespaces. So we need system.configuration, we need system.data, and we need system.data.sql client. So here we are going to have a function which is going to retrieve that help text from SQL Server database. Now, in the interest of time, I have already typed the required code, required ADO.NET code. So I'm going to copy this and paste this function right here. 
So what is this function doing? So notice, first of all, the name of the function, get help text by key. So we provided the help text key, and it's going to return us the help text associated with that key. So we're passing the key as a parameter. Here we have a variable help text, which is initialized to an empty string. And then we are reading the connection string from web.config file, storing it in this variable. And then we are constructing a SQL connection object using the connection string that we have read from web.config file. And then we are building a SQL command object. And we want the SQL command object to actually execute this stored procedure. So we are passing that to the command object. And we want this command object to use this connection object. So we are passing that connection object to the command object. Uh, since this command is actually executing a stored procedure, we are telling that it is a stored procedure. And then if you notice, the stored procedure has got a parameter. And the name of the parameter is at help text key. So here we are building a SQL parameter object. This is the name of the parameter. And this SQL parameter is going to get its value from this function parameter key. And then we are associating this parameter object with this command object opening the connection and executing the command. So whatever result we get back, we are storing that in this variable help text. And finally, we are returning that variable. So pretty straightforward ADO.NET code there. And within our page load function, I'm going to create a variable. Uh, let's actually create a string variable. And this is going to contain our help text key equals, we are going to get that from the request object. OK, and let's actually specify the name of the key as help text key. Now you can give this key any meaningful name you want. OK, so once we have the help text key, we can pass that to this function. And this function is going to return the help text associated with that key. Right, so let's call this function get help text key and to this we need to pass the key value and whatever result we are going to get back we want to set that you know within this development and this development has got an id div result so div result dot inner text equals whatever we get from this function all right so we have our ASPX page now. Now this HTML page is going to use the jQuery Ajax load function and load that data. All right. So the next modification is for this um, HTML page one dot HTML. Now we are not going to modify this HTML in any way. We're going to change this jQuery code. OK, so this is going to stay the same way. We still want to find all the text boxes on this page. And whenever a text box receives focus, we want to execute this code. I'm going to make one change here. I'm actually going to remove this hard-coded string from there and move it here. And I will explain shortly why. And then on this, we are calling the load function. In a previous video session, we loaded the help text from an HTML file. But now, we want to load the help text from this get help text dot ASPX page. So the name of the URI, this is the URI get help text dot ASPX. So we're going to pass that here. OK. And if you look at this get help text dot ASPX page, you know, it actually expects help text key to be passed right to the request. So we need to pass help text key. Now, if you recollect from the previous video session, this load function has got three parameters. The URI to which we want to make the request. The, the second parameter is data, the data that we want to pass to the request to the URI. And the third parameter is callback function, the function that gets called when the request successfully completes. Right. So now I'm going to use that second parameter, the data parameter, and pass the data to the request. OK. So. And I'm going to pass the data using a JSON object. So the key that we want to pass is this help text key. So let's copy that. And the value is actually going to come from this variable help there. 
Okay, so what's going on here? So let's understand this. Now this blur function is not going to change in any way. It's going to stay the same way. Now, when we run the page and when first name text box receives focus, what happens? You know, this piece of code will be executed. So this keyword here refers to the element that received focus. In our example, first name text box received focus. And what are we doing here? We're retrieving the ID attribute value. And if you look at the ID attribute value, it is first name. So we are going to get that value in this variable. Help div is going to contain first name. And look at what we are doing here. So to that first name, we are appending help div. First name help div. So that's the ID of the div element that is associated with first name field. And we are using the ID selector here. So this entire expression is going to evaluate to first name help div. And on that, we are calling the load function and the URI is get help text. So this page is present in the same pay, uh, same folder as HTML page one dot HTML. So that's a relative address. So that's the URI, get help text dot ASPX. And to this page, we have to pass the help text key. And the value is nothing but first name in this case, right? So when we pass first name as the help text key, to our get help text .aspx page, what is that doing? It's passing, actually here, look at this, we are creating a variable and then we are passing that variable to this get help text um, by key function, right? Instead of doing that, we can actually pass this directly to the function, right? So we are passing the help text key. So here we are passing first name right to this function when we pass first name as the key to the function what is this function going to do it's actually going to call the stored procedure and pass that key as the parameter to the stored procedure the stored procedure is going to be executed so when we pass first name this stored procedure will return the help text associated with that field so sql server is going to send that data to our aspx page and our aspx page is going to send that data to html page right so let's look at this in action so let's save all these changes HTML page 1 let's load that and look at this when the first name text box receives focus you know look at that we get that data your first name as it appears in passport and when it loses focus look at that it disappears similarly when last name receives focus we have it when email and income. This data is actually coming from the database and to prove that I'm actually going to fire up SQL Profiler and let's run a new trace and with an event selections make sure you select this column uh, checkbox show all columns and I'm going to set a column filter database name like our database name is sample DB so sample db and I'm going to click OK. So and let's run the trace. So we are running trace on sample db. Now let's go ahead and look at this. As soon as first name text box receives focus, look at that. When we go to SQL profiler, look at that it's calling the stored procedure sp get help text by key and first name is passed as the parameter value. Similarly when last name receives focus, look at that. So here, help text is last name. Okay, so this proves that the stored procedure is called and the stored procedure is returning that data to the ASPX page and the ASPX page is sending that data to our HTML page. Thank you for listening and have a great day.